Welcome to Wednesday Word. I'm so excited to be with you today. So just real quick, I wanted to do a, just a recap from last week of what I gathered from what Pastor was sharing. Uh, one of the things he said is that we all have gifts from God. Uh, and the goal is to use the gifts that God has placed within us to make a difference in the world. Uh, that was one of the things that really stood out uh, to me and that I really appreciated. Another thing that he had said is that every part of the body is important. I remember he even used the word, all of us have, all of us are a 10 in, in some area. A lot of times we have the tendency to compare ourselves or think, oh, I'm not the foot or I'm not the hand, but every, every one of us is a 10 in some area. But with that, we have a unique in critical uh, part to play in God's big, big picture. So I just wanted to just do a real, you know, quick recap of, of last week as we actually this week, what we're doing is we're going to finish out Ephesians chapter four. We're going to start in verse 17. Um, but I wanted to share with you one quick thing. If you are a person that you're wanting to study the scriptures and you don't even know like resource wise where to start, a resource that I have found to be really a helpful tool that I just wanted to share with you. It's called blueletterbible.org. It's just a great you know, place that has lots of resources, help you dig deeper. So I wanted to throw that at you. Um, but with that, let's pray and let's begin in Ephesians 4, chapter 17. But let's pray first. God, thank you for today. Lord God, it's in our heart, God, to want to know you more. And I know one of the ways that we do that is by studying the scriptures, God, your word to us. And so God, today, I pray for an open heart and open mind to not only to receive what you would say, but God also to put into practice your word. God, I pray that your word wouldn't just be knowledge, but it would transform who we are. And we thank you, God, that your word is alive and we are grateful for this day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Are you ready? Here we go. I want to start reading. Now I am going to read uh, from the ESV version, verse 17. Now this I say and testify in the Lord that you must no longer walk as the Gentiles do in the futility of their minds. They are darkened in their understanding, alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them. Ignorance from what? It says, due to their hardness of heart. They have become callous and have given themselves up to sensuality, greed, to practice every kind of impurity. So we'll stop right there. So, see, because of the privileges that God laid out for us in chapters 1 through 3, and because God has poured out his favor and blessing on us, we should walk, we should live in such a way that's different than those that are around us that don't know God. Now, I, I think that would make sense for most of us, but sometimes we can't tell the difference. And so this is a critical thing that's, that, that Paul is saying here, is that our lives should look different than the world or those that are around us that don't know God. So second part to this, this walk or to live um, a certain way. See, Jesus, as it says, that you don't walk in darkness. When Jesus comes into a person's life, it's like he flips on the light switch. He turns on the light, which really, now that we are in the light, we should live in such a way that we have a new awareness of things that are right, things that are wrong. Area, places where I walk or places that I don't walk because of this new awareness um, that happens when you are a follower of Jesus Christ. There's things that should not we should not be stumbling over anymore because the light's been turned on. Um, because before we were in the dark, we didn't know any better. But now, once you're in the light, you live differently. So that's the first part I gather from this. Also, when Paul talks about the Gentiles here, um, these, this was speaking of a people at the time that either claimed no belief in God, so they would consider themselves atheist, or 
they believed in gods, plural, and these gods were immoral. So to follow them, they lived this life to please their gods. There was no moral standard. They lived immoral lives. So with that, in their denial, the Gentiles, in their denial of the true God, they denied any standard of morality, which of course would go in line with if they believed in many gods that were immoral, then it would fit their lifestyle. Um, and with that, they also, they didn't want to have to answer to this one true God that had some standards, had some rights, had some wrongs, had some do this, don't do that. And I find that to be true even in some of my conversations with people. Sometimes people kind of will buck or reject the idea even or the person of God because they feel like either one thing, I just can't live up to his standards because I've not been able to before, or I really don't want to. And so if I just say, well, there isn't a God, then they feel like I'm off the hook. But the spirit of the living God will still convict and work in people sometimes, irregardless. But that's one way that we kind of feel like, I'll just kind of keep this whole God idea away or at a distance so I don't have to be held responsible. Another thing that we read in this uh, is it talked about, they used a word, past, uh, past feeling, which it, what, what this speaks of is that in their lifestyle, there was no sense of shame or no sense of wrongdoing. Um, and I think about in my own life, before Jesus came into my life, there were things that I practiced and did that I didn't even think twice about. There was no level of conviction there. The Holy Spirit was not working in that area of my life. Um, so I can understand this, 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 what this could even say when it says past feeling, it's like a callousness so that, you know, my skin, if it's calloused, I, I don't even feel any pain. It's, 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 there's, it's desensitized. And sometimes, you know, we can walk and live in such a way where we are desensitized to God and the Holy Spirit. We don't want that, of course. Um, then another word that it used is blindness, which also can be understood as, as a hardening. Is like this. I just, I just don't see. I don't see the error of my way or the wrong of my way. And then it goes on and it uses a word, hopefully I'll be able to say it right, but li licentiousness. It's, it's like sensuality. Um, and this is a sin that flaunts itself. Flaunts itself. What do I mean by that? Um, you know, usually people try to hide their sin. They try to, they don't want others to know, usually. However, this word, um, this really, it doesn't really care about the shock value. Um, it doesn't really care about public's opinion. Uh, as long as they can gratify their own desires, that's really all they care about. And you think about that, does that sound familiar? You look, you see things on the news or you see things, music videos, just things in our world today on, uh, in magazines. It's like people flaunt their sin and they want you to know what they are all about and they don't really care. And, and this is just kind of another level of what we're reading in these first few, few verses here uh, that was happening in Paul's time as well. So then it goes on in verse 20, and it says, but that is not the way you learn Christ. Assuming that you had heard about him, heard about him, and were taught in him as the truth is in Jesus, to put off the old self, which belongs to your former manner of life and is corrupt through deceitful desires and to be renewed in the spirit of your minds and to put on the new self. So there's a putting off of the old self, a putting on of the new self. The new self is created after the likeness of God. Man, I love that. Created after the likeness of God in true righteousness and holiness. So we're going to go, let's talk about that now for a few minutes. 
this idea of putting off and putting on. The, the idea, it, it's like changing an outfit or changing clothes or changing into, you know, this new uh, outfit, let's say. So um, like clothes, you and I, now this, go with me for a minute on this. We can choose a different kind of conduct. We can choose to put on a different kind of conduct. Now, let me, let me give an example. So let's say a person was in prison and they served their sentence or they served their time and, and now they're, they're, they're free. They're free to go. So they, the prison doors are opened. The prisoner that was once a prisoner is now free, but he's got his prison clothes on. He walks out of the prison. Now, don't you think it would be weird if the prisoner goes home or wherever he goes and he continues to wear those prison garments. That would just be weird. See, he would, if he did that, he might continue to act, behave like a prisoner. Well, once you're a free man, he can change his clothes. He can put on a new outfit. And just as putting on new clothes, you know, when the person comes out of prison, just as he puts on these new clothes, this really represents a fresh start, a new beginning. You and I, we can change the way that we think about ourselves. We can conduct ourselves differently. Now, when we do begin to conduct ourselves differently, it will begin to change our attitude. Now, think about this. This, this might be a little counterintuitive or, or a little challenging, but we can't wait to feel like a new person, but we can put on or act like a new person. Now, I don't want to confuse anybody with this because I don't mean to say just fake being a Christian or fake being a follower of Jesus and you really are being deceitful and not true. But there's times where you're, you won't feel certain characteristics or even things that we read in the scriptures. You won't feel like doing that, but you can choose to do that. In so, by choosing these things, you can begin to renew your attitude, begin to change your mind, and become different in those areas. Hopefully that makes sense because there's times where we have to do the right thing even when we don't feel like it. I've heard it said that feelings are terrible leaders, but they're pretty good followers. So don't just live your life based upon feelings. Live your life based upon what's true and what's right even when you don't feel like it. Hopefully you can follow me on that. It's not always easy, but... but we need to learn how to do that. Secondly, in, in those, that portion of uh, the verses we read, I liked the words that said, hear about. It says, hear about. And it also says, taught in him. So there is learning involved in our walk with God. Learning. You know what? It's very important to open up this book, to read it, to learn. Now with that, it's our relationship, our walk with God, it goes beyond a, a knowledge. It goes beyond just like our head. I've heard it said this 18 inches or whatever from our head to our heart. It's critical because we want what we're learning and reading to go from here, but also to transition and also affect and impact here. And that's where you get real life change, is when the Word of God takes over our heart. I love that verse, create in me a clean heart, O God. Renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence, O God. See, we want God's Word to be in our heart, in our minds, but also affect our heart. Hopefully that makes sense, yeah? So then we go on. It says, now this is funny, it's a story. When I, I, many of you have heard my story, but I wasn't raised in church. I gave my life to the Lord when I was 
17 years old. I was a, towards the end of my senior year in high school. And I remember when I was a new Christian, my grandfather used to be really bugged about my new commitment to Jesus and going to church. And he, he could see that there was something that changed in me, but it bugged him. It just irritated him. And I remember on several different occasions, he, he would, in his irritation, he would say, man, you're getting brainwashed. Those, the, those people at that church are brainwashing you. And at first, initially, that actually kind of felt like an insult. And that's what he meant by it. it you know, it was insulting to him, or he was insulting me. However, what ended up happening for me one day, I thought, you know what? Man, I need my brain washed. I've got so much stuff in that brain of mine that I, I don't want there. And so when he would make that comment to me, I would begin to agree with him. He said, you're right. I am, I, I am being brainwashed and I need it. I need to be, I need my brain to be washed. I don't know about you, but maybe you'd agree with that statement. So what keeps us from sinful living? It's this, it's learning to live with him in us every moment of every day. The word comes to me, abide, to abide. Now, I don't know if you remember the John 15, verse 5 scripture, but it talks about Jesus says, I am the vine. You are the branches. He that abides in me will produce much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. So this, when, when it talks about abide in these verses, it, it, it's, it's, this, it's this connection, this communion, this union with God. And that's how we can live free from sin and the entanglements of sin is by abiding in him. So when we are a new creation in Jesus Christ, when we are born again, we are born, as we read, into the image of God, Christ's likeness. When we are spiritually alive, that the spiritually alive person instinctively wants to honor God, wants to please God. Now, the old man, the old man that is, was inherited from Adam, that man wants to instinctively rebel against God. So, what we do is we go on. Now, we're going to finish these verses in verse 35 to 32. Therefore, having put off any falsehood, let each one of you speak the truth with his neighbor, for we are members of one of another, or we are members of one another. It says this, listen to this, be angry. Is that in there? It is. Be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger and give no opportunity to the devil. Let the thief no longer steal, but rather let him labor, doing honest work with his own hands so that he may have something to share with anyone in need. And let no corrupting talk come out of your mouths, but only such as is good for building up, as fits the occasion, that it may give grace to those who hear. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and slander be put away from you, along with all malice. Be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, as God in Christ Jesus forgave you. The new man that we're talking about here, the new man tells the truth. The motive for doing this is because now we are members of one another. So if I touch something that's hot, but my head tells me what I'm touching is cold, what do you think is going to happen? That's right. My hand is going to get burned. Why? Because my head lied to my hand. 
So this is the thing. Our bodies, or our, you know, the body of Christ, can only function properly if it tells itself the truth. See, the, remember the verse, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. Only as we're truthful with one another, truthful to ourselves, as, as we tell ourselves the truth, will we really truly walk in freedom. Now, it also says in here, I read this, and I kind of highlighted it, it's okay to be angry. However, just don't sin. And one of the things that it went to, on to say was, don't let the sun go down on your anger. So be quick to forgive. In your anger, do not sin. Another thing it said really about working with your hands so that you can share, it's kind of a simple principle. If you don't work, you don't eat. Working can provide for your needs, but it also can provide for others' needs. The new man, we're finishing with this, the new man speaks differently than the old man. The new man edifies or imparts grace to others. Corrupt talk is not fitting to our new nature. And the last part here that really gets me, we're going to finish with this part, is do not grieve the Holy Spirit. Now think about that for a minute. Do not grieve the Holy Spirit. Can you grieve an active force? Some, some religions claim that the Holy Spirit is an active force. They wouldn't claim or believe that the Holy Spirit is a person. But can you grieve an active force? I would say, no, you grieve a person. The Holy Spirit is a person. You and I can grieve, hurt the Holy Spirit. Because what it's telling me is the, the Holy Spirit is a person. The Holy Spirit has feelings. See, when we love worldly things more than Him, we grieve Him. The new man goes on and talks about don't let bitterness rule in your heart. The new man has control over his emotions. It says, be kind. The new man seeks to show the same kindness and forgiveness to others that God showed us. So you've heard it said, treat others as you would have them treat you, but also treat others as God treats us. God's forgiveness offers complete restoration. He loves, he accepts, he, he adopts, he associates with those that once wronged him. That's amazing about God. So this is, this is it, friends. We forgive because he has forgiven us. So today, that's how we're going to finish. We're going to pray. I want to thank you for joining us. Hopefully that was, a, was enjoyable. I ought to just encourage you to go over these verses, study them. If you have any you know, prayer concerns or any uh, comments, you want to connect more to Arise Church, I just invite you to go to arise.church. There's a connect tab there. We'd love to hear your story, find out more about you. Maybe you've never been able to meet us in person. Would love to, for you to join us on a Sunday in person. But thank you for joining us this Wednesday. God bless you. I want to pray real quickly for you. Thank you, God, for my friends watching today. I pray that your word, God, would change our lives. We love you, God, and we're grateful for you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. God bless you.